Uh, PCOS uh, stands for polycystic ovary syndrome or ovarian syndrome. There are many different conditions that all can, can end up in the final presentation of polycystic ovaries. And what those polycystic ovaries represent is really the inability of the follicles to break through, which is the process that is required for ovulation. These women don't ovulate, or at least don't ovulate regularly. So there are different, what we call phenotypes, different presentations, uh, which all end up in PCOS. Mostly the more obese PCOS patients are at significant risk for insulin resistance uh, and what's called the, what is called the metabolic uh, syndrome, meaning later in life developing high blood pressure, diabetes, um, uh, and, and also arteriosclerotic heart disease. Uh, so those patients represent not only a fertility problem, but in general uh, a, a medical problem to their long-term health. Yet others have none of these associated problems. And we are obviously talking about very different conditions. They are under one big heading. PCOS patients, uh, most of the time, come to our attention because they're infertile, not because they're more fertile. Uh, and it only appears that they produce more eggs because the eggs get arrested in the maturation process. They do not ovulate. And so they line up in the ovary and it looks like, wow, they have a lot of uh, eggs. Indeed, if you then start stimulating these patients, whether for an insemination or uh, for an IVF cycle, they are the patients who are at highest risk for overstimulation, for what we call the hyperstimulation syndrome, because they have so many immature follicles lined up that once those follicles are stimulated and pushed forward, boom, suddenly we have an explosive response and tons of eggs that mature in parallel. And that can be very dangerous. PCOS patients have to be treated very differently from all other fertility patients. And, and if I can uh, summarize it in one word, carefully. We do it very tenderly. We start very low, and they usually do not respond. And then we go slowly up until we hit the point where they respond. And we try to hit that point at the lowest possible level. Uh, that is different from other patients where we do not expect and we do not see this kind of explosive response. Uh, in PCOS patients, we therefore have to be always on the outlook uh, and always cautious about the development of hyperstimulation syndrome. Uh, and these patients need to be very, very carefully managed. We have been very interested in a gene called the FMR1 gene, by some also called the Fragile X gene, which is a tiny snippet of genetic material on the X chromosome. Uh, and we have been pursuing uh, quite active research on this gene um, because we suspected and then confirmed that this gene has major importance uh, for the ovarian aging process. Uh, and as part of our research, we defined uh, different genotypes, meaning different presentations uh, of this gene. And we learned that one of these, uh, of these genotypes, which we have come to call 
the heterozygous normal low genotype uh, is very closely associated or is characterized by a PCOS phenotype at young age. And what that means is that uh, if a woman has this genotype, when she is young, uh, she would present like a PCOS patient, a skinny PCOS patient showing all the classical signs of PCOS. But she very quickly depletes her egg pool with which she is born. And so already by mid-age, very often, uh, she presents with diminished ovarian reserve. And that's when we mostly end up seeing them. And then as they get older, more and more, of the ovarian reserve dwindles. So this is just one more example uh, for the observation that PCOS is not one condition. It is really a whole group of different conditions which all present with polycystic ovaries. Uh, the genotype we described goes even beyond that because these patients don't keep this PCOS presentation. They show it only while they are relatively young. As they get older, they lose the PCOS appearance uh, of their ovaries. Uh, so there's a lot of research going on on PCOS and we still have an enormous amount to learn.